spending spiked. Went up to as high as it ever has been since World War II. The president is basically saying keep spending at these elevated levels and then grow after that. We're basically saying bring spending back down to where it historically has been. So we're not talking about draconian slash of the government. We're basically saying get government back to where it was in 2007, 2008. Now, the tax code, that's a very important point. Our revenues, that's the blue line, our income tax revenues is this yellow line. Our tax revenues as a share of our economy have been remarkably consistent, meaning whether our tax rates were 92% or as low as 28%, the top tax rate, we still basically raise about 18 to 19% of GDP for our economy. Now, the real determiner of tax revenues, whether revenues are going up or going down, is economic growth. That's the key. You got the economy growing, then people are, are not collecting unemployment, they're collecting a paycheck and they're paying taxes. So the reason you can't even see these two lines is because they, they're right on top of each other. As the economy grows, so does revenues. When the economy goes down, revenues go down. So I, I, I agree with what you just said about GE and loopholes. We've got a tax system that's really upside down. And we've got a tax system where you've got one company, GE is a good example, where they make billions of dollars, they don't pay any taxes. And then you've got a company, I was just talking about, you know, Dave Lynch over there, who's got Lynch display vans and Lynch um, motors. You know, he pays taxes. He makes some money, but pays a lot of taxes. I was talking to a guy in Panic Lake two days ago, who was a small business, he just filed his taxes, he paid 35% taxes rate on his, on his income. His biggest competitors are in Canada, and they pay a 16% tax rate. So the point we're making is, they can. The point we're making is, is lower our tax rates to make us more competitive so that we don't tax our manufacturers and job creators more than our foreign competitors tax theirs. Because right now, we tax ourselves, our job producers, not all of them, because some of them have these loopholes, but a lot, most of them, a lot more than our foreign competitors tax theirs, but clean out the deadwood, clean out the tax shelters. This is the individual. individual. So this is not, let me just get into this. This is the individuals. So take a look at who among individuals get the tax deduction. The top 1% get almost all of the tax deduction. The top 20% get a little share of it. Almost all of the tax shelters that are utilized in the tax code are by the top 1%. So for every person in that tax bracket that puts their money in a tax shelter, that is taxed at zero. So what we're saying is clear out the tax shelters, lower everybody's tax rates, and then tax that money. That's why we say broaden the tax base. <coughs> that is what the President's Fiscal Commission supported by a majority of Democrats, said we should do. We agree with that, and that's what we're proposing. So we're not talking about cutting tax revenues. We're talking about redoing the tax code to make it fatter, flatter, fairer, and simpler, and more internationally competitive, and then subjecting more of their income to taxation by getting rid of all these tax shelters. That, to me, helps us with revenues, but it also helps us grow the economy. Because in this international economy we live in, when you tax your businesses, your manufacturers a whole lot more than they are in China or India or wherever, they win, we lose. And we've got to be mindful of that. That is why I just don't think it's a good idea to raise our individual tax rates up to as high as 45%, which is the current path, the current law. One last point, and I know 